Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue, that's Bill behind me, and we are here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. And if you're anything like me, you've been chomping at the bit to start some seeds and it it's time, it's time to start some seeds. Um, so last year we did this shuffle back and forth between the basement and the greenhouse every time it got cold and I hated it so much. I promised myself, hello friend. I hated it so much that I kind of promised myself that this year I would do everything in my power to not have to do that shuffle. So we're gonna start some seeds under some lights. Um, yeah. Never done this before. Want to give it a shot. I figure I can stagger my start times so that I've got some stuff started in here, down here in the basement. And then when we do the next cycle, it should be time that we can just start them in the greenhouse. So here we go. So here's the sit wrap. These boxes sat in my living room for something like 90 days. I have gotten them downstairs to the basement. There are some shelves, there are some lights, and I have no idea why this project has taken me this freaking long to put together. Well, I mean, part of it was we were making space in the basement to put these up and so anyway, they've been there a really long time and I, I got them downstairs and now I'm still looking at them like, uh, let me show you the boxes. These are the shelves and these are some lights. And more or less, we've both been avoiding each other's gaze all month, two months. I ordered these like back in December, I think. And I think I had expected them to be bigger. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let me just... We figure out what kind of tools we need. Yeah, I totally ordered the wrong size. <laughs> <laughs> these were... Uh, really. Yeah, these were supposed to be four foot shelves. I apparently ordered the two and a third foot shelves, but you know, it's. I'm expecting to run out of room anyway, you know? I'm kind of, kind of. It'll be okay. We'll make it happen. It's not just me saying it'll be fine. It'll be fine to, to secure myself. It's actually going to be fine. I staggered my starting dates. Um, I don't know if you know about Clyde's Garden Planner. It's like this, it's this really great little, I'm gonna go grab it. And th this is just great. You put in like, you see the red bar? You use that to find your last frost date which for us is purportedly sometime around the 10th of May. Um, because we are here in growing zone 6B. And then it tells you when you can start something indoors to get it ready to plant outside, when you should direct so what. I, this is really handy. So I'm using that to kind of put together my dates on when I've got to start things. And I'm thinking by the time I do my second set of starts, it'll already be safe enough to move out to the greenhouse to do that. We're just starting stuff in here that needs a really long head start before it gets out to the garden. I've got some onions that I started upstairs that I will separate out into little easier to manage clumps and I'll bring those down here as well. And then I've got tomatoes and peppers and I bought those guys a heat mat cause it's a, it's a brisk 50 something down here in the basement. Um, and a few other things that need a good long head start. So like tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, um, as many nightshades as need be, and a few things that take a really long time to grow up and can use a head start anyway, like some Brussels sprouts. What we start in here, we'll move out there, and then we'll start more out there, and it'll be awesome.
Also this year we're doing, <sighs> I'm so nervous about this. Also this year is going to be our grand experiment in direct sewing. So I'm going to be doing all kinds of stuff in raised beds as well. Um, our root crops, beets, carrots, um, some parsnips, anything that grows under the ground, we're going to be doing those in raised beds, nice soft dirt, um, nice rich compost. I'm going to do the potatoes again in the Ruth Stout beds. Um, let me show you something funny. If you were following along last year, you'll know that we pulled some potatoes out of the ground and they were little potatoes, but they were potatoes. And I was very pleased that we got some potatoes. Long story short, I put these up to cure and then I forgot about them. And potatoes, even if you cure them, they only last so long before something like this happens. So these are, this is our potato harvest from last year. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna plant these again. I figure we'll put them right back in the same patch. We'll see how we do. So here it is in all its glory. Ta-da. These are far easier to put together than the instructions might imply. Um, we got the first one together and went and had dinner, came downstairs and Bill was like, oh, we don't need the instructions. I remember how it's done. And boom, boom, boom. Like I even remembered how it was done midway through. So these were, these were easy. And now we're gonna open up the lights. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Okay, so these are our LED lights. And what are you attaching there? What kind of clips? Um, just check out what they've got here. These are what clip to that. Okay. And then you can attach these to the rack. So they all have the same plug at the end. So you just plug into one. Uh-huh. And then you plug into the end of the other. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, look at that. And there you go. Okay. One of the nicest things about this set of lights is that you can daisy chain them to each other and they'll only still use the one outlet. These lights are being held up by the twine. Let me see if I can get a good shot of this for you. And so they're looped through over here. And then at the top, it's something a little more secure than a slip knot, but still not so tight that we can't get it open. And as the plants get taller, we'll adjust this guy upwards. So we picked up this chain at just tractor supply super cheap like a buck 49 a foot so we're gonna put these in with some s hooks with just some little s hooks and we're gonna hang the lights from these because that twine is just not cutting it Oh, these are too long. Okay. That's fine. So. Is that even? Pretty close. Okay. So much better. Nice and neat. All set up. So all my seeds are in at least the first round of them. So it's Thursday morning, um, and I finally have all my seeds sewn into my starter business over here on the shelves. I'll tell you what though, these lights, they make me happy. Like, this might be my light therapy, <laughs> is to just come down here and, and behold the nonsense in the racks. Um, but hey, we got it done. It took a, almost almost a week 
yeah, it took about a week um, to get my nonsense together. But that's what it looks like when you're working and doing stuff at home, right? Um, but they're in. They're in and I'm thrilled and can't wait to see how this goes. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and Bill this week while we got our stuff put together and our seeds into some dirt. Um, here's to a bountiful spring and we'll catch you up soon. Take care.